the new 98.9 Real Gold Radio. Four seasons with Frankie Valley, And I'm begging you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is 9.08. We finally have our guest in the studio. We've been talking about this for, uh, oh boy, three, four days. We have Richard Mullally in the studio. And good morning to you. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here with uh, Frankie Valley and Glenn Miller, all these people <laughs> around me. Wasn't that great? Yeah, some great old recordings. We have, uh, we have it all. So we're going to be talking about the Muskegon County World War II Veterans Project. In a nutshell, what is it? It's a way that all the veterans from Muskegon County who served in World War II can be remembered and never forgotten. Uh, there were 20,000 who served. Right. And nine out of ten of them are already gone. But the pictures are not gone, and that's what this is. It's a picture identification project, completely free. And the picture is copied, and it becomes part of the collection of the uh, two military museums here in Muskegon. The pictures come from the families. Uh, we never use the original pictures. Uh-huh. So, well, this is one heck of a project. How did this all start, and when did it start? It started in 2009. However, for me, it started as a family project. I realized, uh, after some searching, that I had 20 people in my family who served in World War II. Is that right? And just for my own family records. I was able to get around and talk with them and get pictures of them and I couldn't stop. I bet. It was very obvious that many of my high school teachers, my Sunday school teachers and my friends also uh, served in the war. Uh -huh. So I just started visiting them. Now this is just World War II. It's only World War II. Yeah, it's not uh, the Korean conflict or Vietnam. That's a whole different ball game, isn't it? It is. Uh, fortunately, for about a year, there is a man who has uh, taken over the Vietnam veterans and is interviewing them. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I can't possibly do anything but World War II. <laughs> can't even do that. There are way too many. Yeah. Now, most of these folks, uh, men and women, are, uh, are gone, but you're paying tribute to them. Yes, their okay. children, their nephews and nieces, their widows, and and some friends are uh, digging out their pictures. We make a copy, and whatever information we have about when and where they served and what outfit they were in, that is added to the picture, and it becomes a museum record forever. Okay. Now, if somebody wants to see this, where do they go? Where is it uh, available? for everyone to look at. You can uh, look at it on your own computer. Is that right? It's uh, a situation where the pictures are not put up on display in a museum. There are just too many of them. Right. But uh, 400 men are put on permanent display, and I think you know who those people are. Right. They are the most forgotten people of all. They died in the war yeah. uh, from Muskegon County. But uh, all the other veterans who came home uh, you can sit at home on your, your computer and connect up with the museums and you can uh, see their pictures and send them around to everybody in the family. Oh, that's the way to do it. Now, the technology really is there, isn't it, for oh, something yes. like this? This is just wonderful. And, uh, well, quote, unquote, my father is deceased. He still counts, right? The project is for future generations to have if the family has a photo to copy, the deceased veteran can be included, correct? Now, what, do they get a hold of you if they uh, want to have one of their family members in on this? Or, or well, you're always uh, looking for more people, aren't you? More names. I'm always looking for more, but I certainly can't find them all. Right. So people need to contact uh, me mm -hmm. and tell me about their father, their uncles, their aunts, sure. and uh, that they do have a picture available. It is a picture project, so yeah. uh, whatever picture is uh, available of them, uh, generally in their uniform, wow. is copied. Okay. Now, you're not writing a book or anything, right? Where's the, where's the funds come, the money comes from, from doing this? Uh, you know? Well, first of all, I'll just say that I'm not writing a book because I don't have any time at all to do anything right. except this. Uh, making pictures 
and the money comes um, the veterans paid for it about 70 years ago uh, it's all go. prepaid oh, so yeah. everything is free yeah oh that's so nice wow now uh, we talked about the tribute photo and um, you can see the pictures um, they only uh, let's talk about the LST 93 the uh, USS LST 393 Veterans Museum is uh, one of only two LSTs that exist right. in the world. Right. There were 1,100 of them produced for the war, and uh, one of the major reasons we won the war. Yeah, the, but the, most of them have been scrapped, one thing or another, right? Oh, yes, all but two are gone. Wow. And uh, we're fortunate to have one in Muskegon, which has become a museum. And it has to do with everything military and especially connected with Muskegon. So there, there's great displays there. And they are one of the two museums that receive these pictures by a computer. Okay. Now, um, who is eligible? I think you touched briefly on that, but there are two requirements in this, correct? Yes. The person... Uh, living or deceased makes no difference. Uh -huh. uh, the person must have uh, been a member of the USS uh, or the U.S. military from uh, any time from Pearl Harbor Day, December 7, 41, to the last day of 46. Uh -huh. Now, 46 sounds a little odd because the war ended in 45. Right. The government uh, added uh, a year of eligibility to be considered a World War II veteran and to be eligible for the GI Bill. So anybody who was in uh, the military up until the last day of 46 is officially a World War II veteran, and many of them were uh, working in after hostilities uh, activities all over the world. Sure. The other requirement is, because this is the Muskegon County Project, the person must have been a resident of Muskegon County at some time, uh -huh. maybe at the time of the war, uh, maybe later, maybe even just recently, moving here to uh, assisted living. That's uh, a residency requirement. Okay. Tell you what, we're going to take a little break. Can you uh, stay with us for a little bit? I think I can. Yeah, I hope you can. I know you're a busy guy. I've known you for a long time. You've listened to me. Uh, oof, I've been a lot of radio stations, and you were always there, right? Oh, yes. WKBZ was the one I remember the most. Sure, sure. Yeah, those were fun days in radio. I remember playing Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett and all that good old music. That was back in 1972, you know. It was, And I, that's where I started... Um, well, I started in 1966, but I moved to WKBZ in 1972, and it was like walking into a time capsule, you know? It was the, the good old boy station across the street from the, from the Pond Little Golf Course and all that. Oh, yes. Here I was just playing all that wonderful old music. But anyway, enough about that. <laughs> I could talk all day about, uh, you know, some of that stuff. But we're going uh, to be right back, and we've been talking with... Um, uh, Richard Mullally and the topic uh, this morning, the Muskegon County World War II Veterans Project. And uh, we have uh, some more to say about it before we wrap it up, so stand by. The new 98.9 Real Gold Radio, Barry Young. It is 919. Back to our special guest uh, in the studio this morning. We have Richard Mullally and our topic, uh, something really tremendous, the Muskegon County World War II Veterans Project. Now, you already have well over 3,100 uh, local men and women who served their nation in World War II listed, correct? Well, it's actually 3,600. I have really? uh, just about 500 uh, right now ready to turn into the museum uh -huh. where they scan them. Uh -huh. And then I start collecting more. Uh -huh. So it, it will never be finished. I bet. You have will, a, you have, now, you have a website, right? Yes. Where the, everybody can see this. And what is that? Uh, the, the website is uh, strictly bare bones. You won't hear music or right. uh, have moving pictures, but right. it is a list. It's okay. a list of 3,600 names wow. of men and women who are already included. Okay. So if a person goes to this uh, website, they can see if their uncle or their cousin or their particular loved one is already included. Okay. Now this is for World War II only. That's it. Okay. Uh, I can't do 
all wars. And oh, no. It's from December 7th, 1941. That date will li live in infamy, won't it? Yes. Until December 31st of 1946. So, boy, if somebody's listening out there and they... they uh, well, everybody, I think you were telling me off the air that everybody has someone from World War II in their family, in their past, correct? Yes, and everybody they, does. Okay. Now, that would extend into the extended family, second cousins and such as that. Sure. But uh, most people have somebody they know who was in World War II, wow. and most of those people are gone, but they're not forgotten. Oh, no, no, no. We... <laughs> If it wasn't for them, we'd probably be, be speaking German or Japanese or <laughs> yeah, kind of a far off thing. But well, we owe them so much. Oh, our, you bet. our generation especially has received a world of uh, freedom. Yes. And I'm sometimes afraid to watch the news because of the uh, very unpleasant things that are happening all over the world. And I decided a couple of years ago I, I can't do anything about that. Right. But I can do this. I can do this one thing so that uh, these people from the greatest generation are remembered forever. That is a wonderful thing. You know, every day, I keep saying this, but every day is Veterans Day on this radio station, yes. Real Gold Radio. We play a lot of the good old rock and roll, and we're, we're updating it, uh, music into the 80s, early 90s. You have to do that. But we go around to a lot of the uh, VFWs and the Eagles and the American Legion posts, and we... Uh, Get recordings of some of the folks. You've heard that. And that's a fun thing to do. So every day is Veterans Day on this station. I kind of like to do that. So they uh, have to contact you if they know someone that should be on this list, right? And once again, how do they do this? Well, the phone number is easy. It's 744-3418. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, the cards that I hand out have my uh, email address. Okay. It's... Uh, it, absolutely necessary that they contact me because I, I can't possibly know who all these thousands of people were yeah. but they know because they have the pictures uh -huh. and that's the whole key to it the picture of the veteran living or deceased right whether he served overseas or whether he served in the United States makes no difference at all yeah. they're all treated exactly the same mm -hmm. now you have a vintage car that uh it's a well, old model, uh, Model T Ford, is that what you have? It's a 1928 Model A, model which a. Uh, it's the same age as the youngest World War II veterans. Is that right? The that youngest veterans today are 86 years old. Yeah. We affectionately call them the tail enders because oh. they got right in at the end of the war and yeah. even after the war was done. Yeah. And uh, they are 86 up to, some of them are close to 100 now. But I see you running around only in the summer, of course, with your with your older vehicle, and I think I know who that guy is. Do you well, get into parades with that uh, vehicle too? I I don't do parades, but I certainly uh, visit the veterans, and it's not just summer; it's spring, summer, and fall, yeah. and occasionally in the winter. And my special uh, use for that car is when I am visiting a veteran. Uh, I've visited yeah. almost a thousand, many times. <laughs> I arrive in the Model A, and they never know it's going to happen, but that's, oh. a, that's a real uh, icebreaker. Oh, I bet it is. So this is uh, your kind of like retirement project. What did, you, what did you retire from? I retired 20 years ago from teaching at Muskegon High School. I was oh. a biology teacher, but always interested in history, and now the history is all coming alive to me to hear it from oh. their own lips. I bet. The stories of uh, what they did and what they saw. Mm. And sometimes I've actually interviewed uh, two men who died the next day. Is that right? So well, yeah. they didn't often tell their children the details or sometimes anything at all. But when a stranger like myself sits down with them, they, they open up. Oh, that's tremendous. Well, I think we have covered just about everything. Anything you want to add? Just that uh, you must contact me. Yeah. I can't find you. I don't know who you are, but you know. Yeah. And if you dig out that picture, and if you find uh, written information, mm. let's put your man and woman in the uh, right. in museum. The veterans are going digital, but it's up to you to help. There you go. Well, thank you very much.
for what you do. It's a great retirement project for you, isn't it? Yes, I'm thanking, <laughs> I'm thanking them. They, yes. they did it. Yeah, oh, they sure did. But you're bringing the whole thing kind of like alive again. And that's, that's just great. So thank you once again. All right. We Thanks have, for having me. You bet. We've been talking with Richard Mullally. The topic, the Muskegon County World War II Veterans Project. And, uh, boy, if there's anything you want to relay, just, just shoot me an email sometime or give me a call, and we'll take care of it. But thank you, Richard. Thank you. Okay. Number this is my special group. This is what I wish. If I had to cut back, I would only do this. These are the men who uh, died. There are 400 of them. I have pictures of 90% uh, of them already. Sometimes the pictures are just outstanding. They're like works of art. Sometimes they're very poor quality from the newspaper because I, I haven't been able to find a family member. But they are included no matter what because Muskegon needs to know that there was a price. And that's, that's the price. Okay. Got it? Yep. All right. And an interesting sidelight is uh, there was no color uh, film available to the public uh, during the war, so these are all painted. Yeah. It was a military situation only. Only the military had color film.